One of the most serious problems facing mankind in recent times is coronavirus or COVID-19. What do these viruses contain and what are the characteristics of a virus that can have a huge impact on a person's daily life? Today's video is about that. Many viruses come to mind when we say virus. We can classify them this way. What are viruses and how do they start? Can a virus harm humans? You may have many questions about this. A virus is a submicroscopic infectious agent that is mutated only in the living cells of an organism. The virus infects all species, from animals and plants to microorganisms, including bacteria. Viruses are found in almost every ecosystem on Earth and many of them are biological factors. First we study the scientists who discovered the virus and their findings. The study of viruses is called virology, a subspecies of microbiology. Dmitry Ivanovsky, a Russian microbiologist, was born on November 9, 1864. Ivanovsky is one of only two biologists to have the honor of discovering a virus. In 1890 he tried to find the cause of the tobacco mosaic disease. From the affected leaves he prepared a solution containing the infectious agent and he made a new type of filter made of porcelain called a Chamberland filter. Ivanovsky found that by passing the filter the pathogen is more likely to infect the tobacco plant, which means that the agent is smaller than a bacterium. He published his results in 1892 and later engaged in other work. Six years later, in 1851, Marty Neuss Bijerink, a Dutch biologist, independently discovered the same type of virus and named it a virus. Neither Ivanovsky nor Bijerink understood that the virus was particles, for example, Ivanovsky thought it was a toxin produced by bacteria. Until the advent of the electron microscope in the 1950, tobacco mosaic virus was a very small hole made up of a single spiral RNA strand surrounded by a protein coat. Ivanovsky and Bijerink both died before realizing the importance of their discovery. So they lost the Nobel Prize they deserved. Dmitry Ivanovsky's 1892 article discovered a non, bacterial pathogen that infects tobacco plants. More than 9,000 species of the virus have been described in detail since Marty Neuss by Jerink discovered the tobacco mosaic virus in 1898. We now know the history of the discovery of the virus. But how did the virus originate? The origin of viruses in the evolutionary history of the world is unclear. How the virus originated is still a question. Scientists say some have evolved from pieces of DNA that can move between cells, while others are thought to have evolved from bacteria. In evolution, viruses are an important medium of horizontal gene transfer, increasing genetic diversity in a way that is similar to sexual reproduction. Some biologists consider yin to be a biological form of the virus this is because biological traits such as genetic material carry, reproduction and evolution occur. Although it does not have key features such as cell structure, which is an integral part of an organism, a virus is considered an organism because it usually meets the essential criteria of an organism as mentioned above. Although viruses have some of these biological properties, viruses are known as our living organisms or self-replicators. Can a virus be transmitted from person to person? How does that happen? Viruses spread in different ways. One mode of transmission is through organisms that cause disease called vectors. For example, insects that feed on plant sap, such as aphids, often transmit the virus from plant to plant. Animal viruses can be carried by blood-sucking insects. Influenza viruses are spread by coughing and sneezing. Noroviruses and rotavirus, which are common causes of viral gastrointestinal diseases, are transmitted through dead urine, 
either by hand-to-mouth contact, or by food or water. The dose of norovirus needed to cause infections in humans is less than 100 particles. HIV is one of the few viruses transmitted through sexual contact and exposure to infected blood. A virus is a very small infectious particle that can only reproduce by infecting a host cell, making the virus the commanding officer of the host and using its resources to make more viruses. For this reason, viruses are not considered alive without a host because they cannot reproduce on their own. Viruses do not have cells, they are very small, much smaller than living cells, and are basically the same amount of nucleic acids and proteins. However, virus cell-based life has a few important features in common. For example, they have nucleic acid genes based on the same genetic code used by your cells and the cells of all living things. Also, like cell-based life, viruses have a genetic variation and can evolve. Therefore, even if they do not meet the definition of life, viruses seem to exist in a suspicious zone. Maybe viruses are immature like vampires. Viral infections in animals trigger an immune response. Vaccines that provide artificial immunity to specific viral infections can trigger immunosuppressive responses. Is the virus really deadly? Some viruses that infect humans can actually cause serious and often deadly diseases, but other viruses can be manipulated in a way that is beneficial to human health. These viruses provide the ability to cure cancer, correct genetic disorders, or fight pathogenic viral infections. In addition, in many genetic studies, viruses are used to determine molecular mechanisms, used as insecticides, and have been reported to increase drought tolerance in some plants. COVID-19 is a virus that is affecting more and more people in our world these days. What can be done to prevent such a dangerous virus? Bring the sanitizer and wear your mask. Keep at least one meter distance from others. Keep your shopping time short and make a list. And more information can be found at the link in the description. If you think the video is good, please like and comment. To watch more videos about the world like this, subscribe to the channel and click on the bell icon. See you in the next video, put on mask stay safe.